When looking at any electronic circuit, there are many waveforms that can be seen, and the sine wave is probably the most common, and the most important. In this video we'll be looking at the sine wave and revealing some of its key features so that you can understand what it is and why it appears in so many circuits and situations. On an oscilloscope this waveform looks like a simple point going up and down but over time it plots out the familiar shape. It also sounds quite plain, and normally musicians, for example, like to use other waveforms that have greater richness. But let's hear first what a sine wave sounds like on its own. Now, let's look at some of the basics. The waveform varies over time. The actual parameter that's often seen in, elect in electronic circuits is voltage, but it can also be current or any one of a number of other variables. It's worth noting that a sine wave is periodic. In other words, it repeats itself after one cycle, so one cycle is exactly the same as the next one. As the name suggests, a sine wave traces out a curve that follows the values of the trigonometrical value of sine. We could look up the value of sine between 0 and 360 degrees or 0 and 2 pi radians, whichever you want, and then plot them and we would see that the points would trace out a sine wave shape. As sine is normally associated with angles, we can imagine a sine wave as a point moving around a circle and the value above the horizontal axis, or below it, being the, the instantaneous amplitude as we see here. The angle of the point between the horizontal axis and the line drawn from the centre to the point itself is the angle for which we take the sine. This means that a complete movement round the circle corresponds to one cycle. It's possible to write a sine wave as a mathematical formula. The amplitude is the sine of what is called the angular frequency times the time. The value increases and decreases according to time and to the rate at which the waveform is advancing. The equation comprises several parts. The variable a for the amplitude scales the overall value so that when the sine is equal to 1, its maximum value, the whole equation gives the required peak value. Omega is the angular frequency and this can also be expressed as 2 pi times the frequency. This gives the instantaneous value at any position on the plot. As the time advances over the cycle, the value of sine will vary accordingly. The additional variable here enables a phase difference to be accommodated. If the waveform starts at its peak as it does in the case of a cosine waveform, then this variable can be set to 90 degrees or pi by 2. It also allows other phase differences to be accommodated, which are often needed in various electronic circuits. For example, if there are two sine waves, each with the same frequency, then the phase difference between them can be discovered by looking at the phase offset variable. The difference in this variable between the two sine waves will be the phase difference between them. So far, we've looked at signals as they're seen on an oscilloscope looking at a plot of amplitude against time. But it's also possible to look at a plot of amplitude against the frequency, in other words looking at the spectrum of a signal. It's a bit like tuning an analogue radio up a band and noting the strength of all the signals that appear at different places. If we look at the spectrum of a sine wave, then we see that it consists of a single frequency. There are no harmonics or other signals apart from the background noise. A sine wave is just a single frequency, and in fact it is the building block for other periodic waveforms. There are several key aspects to the sine wave. The first is the period of the waveform. This is the time for one cycle. It's the time from a point on one cycle to the same point on the next one. It doesn't really matter which point is taken, but the exact point must be taken on two successive waveforms. Sometimes the point may be where it crosses the zero volt line, or at other times it may be a specific trigger voltage. 
The next is the frequency. This is the number of vibrations per second, so it's possible, for example, to measure how many times the waveform passes up or down through the zero volt line in a second, or another voltage could be used. The frequency can be measured as the number of cycles per second, but these days the unit that's used for frequency is the hertz. One hertz is equal to one cycle per second. As frequencies can rise very high, we use the standard metric multiples of kilo for a thousand hertz, mega for a million hertz, and giga for a thousand million. The amplitude is another key measurement. There are several ways the amplitude can be measured, but two are the peak amplitude, and there's also the peak to peak amplitude. There are other measurements of this, but these are a topic for another video. There are many places where we see sine waves. Many RF signals are sine waves, and the electrical AC supply, or mains as it's sometimes called, is also a sine wave. And often it has a lot of noise on it, but essentially it is a sine wave. And there are audio generators which often produce sine waves, and there are many other places where these waves are seen. But other periodic or repetitive waveforms are made up from sine waves. Take the example of a square wave. This is made up from a series of sine waves. The fundamental corresponds to the basic repetition rate of the square wave, and then the third harmonic is at a level of a third of the fundamental, and the fifth harmonic is at a level of the fifth of the fundamental, and so forth. When all these components are added together, they sum to give the square wave. The more sine waves in the series, the closer to an actual square wave it becomes. This can be expressed mathematically, as we see here, with a series of sine waves of different harmonics and different amplitudes. And the spectrum of the square wave is like this, and we can again see how the different harmonics decrease in amplitude with increasing frequency. And we can also note that for a square wave, only the odd harmonics are present. Other waveforms can similarly be made from sine waves, and again, we can look at the spectrum of several different waveforms to see how they differ. For example, here is a triangular waveform. And this one here is a sawtooth wave. All of these can be synthesized from sine waves. So that's our quick introduction to the sine wave. If you want to find out more, please head over to the description section where you'll find more information and some useful links. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and it will be really good if you can like the video. Thank you.